Hey there guys, this is Andrew with Tech Engineered, and today I'm going to be giving you five pieces of advice about picking your RAM for your next computer or upgrading your RAM. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that it fits your motherboard. And this is pretty easy to do because you can see whether your motherboard supports DDR4, DDR3, DDR2, DDR3L. And just look and see once you've picked out your motherboard and see which RAM form factor it takes and then pick your RAM accordingly. Most modern motherboards use DDR4 since it is the newest standard and the fastest standard, but if you are getting a old motherboard or you already have an old motherboard, you will need to get the RAM form factor that fits it. The next thing that you need to do is make sure that your RAM is coming from a reputable company. There are some lesser companies out there that make RAM that generally isn't as good as the more name brand companies such as Crucial or Adata. So just check and make sure, look at the reviews and make sure that you are getting good quality RAM because if your RAM goes out, your computer will not run. The next piece of advice is to not worry about the clock speed that much. A lot of people get all wrapped up and you know, is this like 300 megahertz RAM? Why is this one like 800 megahertz and stuff like that? Generally, I would just look for something that is over 2000 megahertz and really from there on, you can't really tell much difference in the clock speed because your programs are just gonna open and close at the same speed and that's dependent on the program because you can only go so fast on the RAM with it actually having an impact on the performance of the computer. So don't really worry about the clock speed of the RAM because it doesn't really matter that much when you get up super high. The next thing is something that I think gets a little neglected which is the cast latency on the RAM which is basically the amount of time that it takes for the RAM to respond for a system call. So the system will say, hey, we need this much RAM and we need to put this there and the RAM will basically need to take a little bit of time to respond to that because the RAM cannot respond instantaneously. Even though it is random access memory, it takes a while for it to be randomly accessed. And by a while, I'm talking like a couple of milliseconds, but still a couple of milliseconds can have a huge effect on the time that it takes to open programs and do stuff like that. So really look for the lowest cast latency that you can get. And not a lot of people pay attention to this, but it is something to take into consideration when looking for new RAM. Get the highest clock and the lowest cast latency that you can, and you'll have the fastest RAM possible. The next question is, do you really need a heat spreader on your RAM? Does it really impact performance that much, as opposed to a stick of RAM that does not have a heat spreader on it? And the answer to that question really is no, unless you're doing a lot of overclocking, or if you have a really high clocked RAM module, then it probably needs a heat spreader on it, and that's why the companies put them on there. So if you're doing a more budget-oriented build, you might get one without it, but a lot of companies just put the heat spreader on there because they do look better when they do have the heat spreader on it. It looks sleeker, and it looks more gamerified. So really don't worry about the heat spreader as much. If you can find a good kit of memory that does not have a heat spreader on it and gets good reviews, I would go ahead and go with that. You can save a lot of money getting a kit that doesn't quite look as good but still performs the same as a kit with a heat spreader that looks good. Unless you're going for a very aesthetic build that you want to look super nice, then I would definitely get heat spreaders because they do help out the aesthetic of your build a whole lot. That's all I have for you guys when it comes to RAM advice, and go out there, find it, research. As with any component, you need to do a lot of research with it and figure out what is the best for you, and I hope my video has guided you on what to research when it comes to your RAM. And if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like on it. If you enjoy this channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you have advice for future content that can be made here, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.